18 months before COVID happened, we, we had mapped out our digital roadmap. And even then, um, when COVID hit, the questions from how, when, how are we going to afford this suddenly became straight into survival mode. There was no option, right? So in a way, like the blessing in disguise was that COVID helped us accelerate this digital transformation. And I think um, echoing what a lot of the earlier uh, session of the panelists said in digital leadership, um, digital transformation really isn't about a destination. It is really a journey that involves all levels of the organization. It's group wide. As long as you have a mobile phone, you can be digital, you know? So I think COVID really helped us with that, that everyone saw the importance because we have been running what, uh, 24 stores offline and then uh, two online platforms um, for Misery, DD Collective, and then now the third one being Ori. Um, all the focus suddenly just became online, you know, 23 years in brick and mortar, 41 years in manufacturing, none of that history mattered anymore. It suddenly was just one platform and you either do it or, or you don't. And, 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 and um, the thing that really um, was remarkable and still continues uh, to, to inspire me every day is how the team just got it together and immediately we set up a crisis management team uh, called Mystery Group Hope. Um, and from there, everybody just immediately know, knew what needed to be done. And of course, having said that, during the time, it wasn't always smooth sailing. It was very frightening. Uh, right. I mean, I think we're all human at the end of the day. It was really quite scary. Yeah. But so I think this, yeah, this gave us the opportunity to look in hindsight on how we've, we've come, we're, we're slowly getting out of this. Okay. Um, okay, so talking about that scary part, I think the, this is unprecedented times. I mean, there's no references. So how did you guys know what to do? I mean, first of all, how did you deal with the whole situation? Because it was scary. Some people cannot move forward because they're like, uh, kind of thing. Um, how did you deal with it? And number two, um, how did you guys decide on what to do since there was no reference that we could turn to? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah Christy, yes. Um, so immediately um, in the crisis management team, we worked on three pillars, uh, which was uh, business continuity, uh, cost control and cash management. And then on the comms front, um, our head of brand experience came up with a campaign, um, replacing the words of I, my, them with we, our and us. And that helped us communicate internally and externally. Um, I think a lot of this... Um, stems from having the mission, vision, and values very clear throughout the organization. And that's what helped us and is still helping us um, um, navigate through this. Okay, got it. Um, Lanise, what about you? What was the thought process? Because there were no references. How did you guys decide on what to do? Um, I think it's going back to basics, right? Um, be, being able to openly communicate with the team um, mm -hmm. and, and being able to rally them up together. So in this time, in this pressing time, is to ensure that your whole team can move towards the same direction with you at the same pace. So having that, not only having the mission, vision, that's very important, but also constant communication. And especially when all of us are working from home, how do you constantly communicate with them, you know? So we, we bring on, when we do comms online, we also need to make sure that we recap it so that people who are, um, to avoid any misunderstandings in where the next step of uh, the, the move of our business or the strategy, where do we go next? So, but other than that is to also really look into, you know, you the fundamentals of the business, like where are your costs uh, being incurred? How are you making your, your revenue? Are you, is, do you need to change? Do you need to adopt a new business model, et cetera? So those are the things that it's like a perfect time to really do a reflection and a deep dive into your business and really figuring out is there any changes or pivots that you need to do. Right. So basically, it was like starting a new startup or kind of uh, re-looking at our business model canvas and all those kind of things, right? Correct. And yep. to make sure that you don't feel like it's, you're failing your own business. It's, it's okay. not a failure. It's about really adapting and mm -hmm. really changing as time goes by. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, with one of my interviews earlier on our show, um, our panelists actually said that actually the market is still there. It's just that the way they consume is different. And so you need to kind of tweak it towards a new market. That's what they said, which, which I think is really, really true. Um, there's a question here. Uh, Lenise, do you mind sharing what your business model looks like? That's from Melody Yap. 
Yeah, so um, we have two types of business model. So for our marketplace where retailers can just jump over to our platform to find the right suppliers and the right product for the business, we actually take a percentage, like a commission, for every single transaction. And we charge the suppliers that list their products on the platform. But on the other hand, this is the, and this is actually our best-selling product right now and during this pandemic, right, is our software. So mm -hmm. our software tool is to actually enable B2B businesses bring their whole traditional businesses, wholesale traditional businesses online. And we create a very simplified sort of version so they can actually now connect to their retail customers and to their wholesale customers without having being there and servicing them in person. And the whole experience is the same, right? So the goal for us is to actually, um, and with that software, we actually take a um, monthly subscription fee. Wow, so, okay. Yeah. So if they want to know more about this, they can go to your website, right? Definitely. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Now, uh, Tara, what about you? I mean, the, this, these are unprecedented times. There were no references. So how did you guys yeah. decide on, you know, going live? I know that was a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber show was going on and we were uh, like Ooh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so well um everything everything we were well, the infinity group is really um um we we create experiences so we're 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 creating um classes uh for for people to learn performing arts we do we we do um corporate drama based corporate training so all this came to a grinding halt mm -hmm. um and, and and we decided to just put everything on Zoom. So our performing arts classes continued throughout MCO on mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. So uh, Joanna Bessie and her team continued to teach drama and, and singing and dancing. Well, not the, not dancing actually, just the, the, the singing and acting on, online. Uh, we even started doing our corporate training online, um, doing leadership and uh, uh, team building activities, which would have been in person online. So basically, it was just one day when, when we sat down all our HODs and we said that, you know what, we knew this day was coming and we've been slowly working towards it, but it just has dropped upon us and we have no option but to just um, um, adopt this and just like everyone just learn everything digital immediately, go on, uh, go on webinars and just, you know. Um, so... Uh, even in the p performing arts, we were always trying to push the envelope in uh, as to how can we digitize and how can we introduce um, um, a, a digital element to performing arts, which, you know, some people, the, the purists would have frowned upon. But mm -hmm. I just said, you know what, we have to move with the times. We can't just stay the way we are. So if, uh, if um, using... Um, Animation on screen, uh, on stage, helps us make our shows more wow and and takes it to another level. Why not? So we, we've been just, you know, whatever we can do to to digitize everything, and of course, um, at Tiarasa Escapes, it, it's uh, uh, you know the, the the hotel booking system is all online, and we're using social media to to shout out to all our our um, customers to say we're. We've reopened. What what have we done to 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 make it a, a safer and more enjoyable um, stay for you? So that's, okay, yeah. fantastic. Um, I'm gonna ask a really difficult question because you know I hear a lot of people were let go and stuff like that. Did you have to make any hard decisions about you know letting people go? Or what was the strategy yeah. for you? Well, sadly, uh, we had to to to. Uh, put some people on a oh gosh I can't, I can't remember the term but uh, yeah we, we had to downsize definitely okay mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah thankfully for the for government support some of our staff were, are, are on that support scheme okay. uh, and well it's really sad to think that we might never be the infinity we used to be like like before but um, Still, uh, yeah, everyone's working partly from home, partly in the office. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that by next year, when things get better, we can bring the whole team back together again. Right, I see. Okay. Now so you lean yeah. and mean. You, got, you had to make the hard, difficult decisions. Yeah. Okay, got it. What about you, uh, Lenise? 
Yeah, um, fortunately for us, when last year, when, when my co-founder and I, we heard about the whole COVID-19 outbreak in China, right? Um, we, we quickly had re-looked into our expenses and mm-hmm. renegotiated to stretch cash flow payments for all our operating overheads and expenses. So because our team is very lean, so we are a team of 28 as of the moment. So um, we've managed to switch around and focus a lot more on sustainability. So as of the moment, I am, uh, my, my team and I, we are already um, profitable. We are a profitable business that can cover like our overheads. So because of that, we were very lucky actually. Okay. Okay. So really kudos to my co-founder. Like he was just digging up all these expenses and, uh, and, and renegotiating all of that. So we were very lucky um, that happened. Yeah. Do you do this exercise often or it just happened to happen before? Uh, I mean, because uh, we're planning. We, no, we, we do that at least twice a year. Okay, got it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's a very good business strategy, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm a big believer of really staying lean. Yeah, kind of thing. Until we start really showing <laughs> kind of thing. What about you, Christy? Um, uh, we've always operated in quite a lean manner. Um, so mm-hmm. our priority is to keep jobs. Um, our teams have been agile in the process. Uh, the production team, in fact, in week three of MCO, pivoted and, and we started producing PPEs just to get some source of revenue um, coming oh, in and to help the okay. frontliners. And so, um, thankfully, uh, and also the, the retail frontline team um, pivoted to become sales leads for the digital platforms. So, um, yeah, that, that really helped in all aspects, uh, at least shoulder a part of, of the revenue because um, mm-hmm. things need to be ongoing, right? And um, Yes, okay. Yeah, so you I basically think, pivoted during that time to help take care. Yes, correct. Yeah, and I, okay. I think it is what it is across the retail industry. No business is spared. That's the reality. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we, we choose to face this as a family and, and come out of it hopefully stronger together. Not easy, okay. but yeah, we're trying. Not easy. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, things are not easy. That's why, um, you know, um, you know, what's the, how do we handle when things yeah. are tough, right? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I wouldn't know where to begin because <laughs> I've never had that uh, opportunity to kind of face that. But anyway, uh, moving along. Um, so you, you made all these changes. How did your customers or the market respond to it? Share some interesting experiences. Or what surprised you the most? I, th- I think what surprised me the most was that we, we didn't realize we'd be reaching out and, and breaking borders with, um, you know, by, by going online. Mm. We were really just marketing um, infinityv.asia to Malaysians who wanted uh-huh. to watch uh, all our shows but couldn't, couldn't anymore. And suddenly mm-hmm. here we go, you know, here we were. It's an accidental <laughs> reach out to the rest of the world, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with our with our uh, performing arts and uh, um, corporate drain, uh, corporate training <laughs> classes. It okay. was actually like people from Indonesia who reached out to us, Singapore, you know, and and said, "Could you could we could we join your uh, drama based corporate training programs?" Which is excellent. Oh, yeah. okay, fantastic. So you ha- you had leads coming in from overseas, yeah? yeah. And we yeah. were like, "Oh, where'd you find us? You're online." Okay, okay that's cool. Wow. Okay. And did it, it, was it difficult to set it up online or you already had it, but, but it was a method of going online? So we, we, we set it up during MCO. <laughs> and we put well done. Like, put together a website now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done. Well done. So MCO has been good for a lot of business. <laughs> what about you, Lanise? Um, you know, how, how did your customers respond or the market respond? And what, what surprised or impressed you the most during this period? Yeah, so um, for those of you who were in the last session and heard what Dr. Wei said, necessity is the key for, is the mother of innovation, Yes. right? <laughs> I also believe in that. And I, I saw the outcome of that where a lot of our, you know, traditional wholesalers, where typically it takes us um, uh, a, a couple of like weeks to actually get them educated, get them, them on board and, and started using um, the, our platform to go online, right? that duration got cut in half. So during MCO, we saw a huge surge of traditional wholesale businesses coming up to us and saying that, hey, I am losing my offline sales. I need to bring it online. I need to still connect with my customers. Please help me just bring them, uh, just, just set up my portal online for me ASAP. 
And we were like, are you sure? Like, do you need us to go through? He's like, I know everything. Just give me the money and just like jump on, uh, jump on board. So we were very shocked and surprised how fast and how quickly they move. And again, it leads back to necessity, right? Like they needed this to happen. Um, and yeah, necessity, okay. necessity is also important for change. <laughs> okay, cool. Sounds great. Um, I love the pandemic as well. Uh, what about you, Christy? Um, how did the market respond to it? And um, yeah, what, what surprised you the most or impressed you the most? Yeah, I think um, there was undeniably a shift of uh, the con uh, the customer expectations throughout the various phases of the NCO. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we were very blessed in a sense that in the first two weeks, uh, so the first phase, right? Um, Unfortunately, at the time, our inventory was all over in the warehouse, in stores, and, and, and it was pretty much locked down, right? So our customers were so understanding that they were still placing orders online, but they were agreeable to receive back orders like when, when we would be able to fulfill. But like early on in this session as well, we sort of didn't know when that was going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because phase one became phase two and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but at, at some point, um, we, we had to, to get access to the inventory and we were able to close out 680 orders in four weeks. And um, that was quite crazy for a very small, lean fulfillment team. So that also presented an opportunity for us to, to change up the, the organizational structure, right? To, to take fulfillment out of just digital and, and to make um, really the online platform just like another store as, as part of the, the entire business. So I think... Um, if any of you read the book um, from the 90s called Delivering Happiness, that, that was our main focus in those weeks. So Tony wow. Zappa said it right. It was just uh -huh. delivering happiness. So whatever it took, deliver happiness, you know, and, and wow. that's now coming out of this um, uh, situation a little bit. It's, um, I think it's, it's something great to remember um, that any brand survival really starts from the customer journey. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and you're right. It's delivering happiness. Okay. Although we're stressed out and didn't sleep during it. that time, yeah. right? I love it. But delivering <laughs> happiness and experience, right? Okay. Um, now that all this has happened, um, has your business been forever changed? Will you be going back to the old business model or it's completely changed and how so? Tiara? Well, I definitely... Well, all business model is is well we're never looking back again yeah for sure um and uh yeah we're, we're we're not looking back just charging on forward and trying to make the most of life uh with uh with the help of digital okay so you'll be using more digital i have a specific a personal question for you how on earth do you teach people in a class digitally i mean i can do it as a trainer but if there's like an acting or a dancing class, is it possible? I know the answer, but some of our viewers might not. So can you share with us how? Well, uh, Joanna Bessie has been doing it very successfully at the mm -hmm. Academy. So, um, oops, sorry about my cat. Um, <laughs> um, it's the star of the show, by the way. Everyone yeah. loves Yeah, everyone's <laughs> chatting about it. Tiara, yeah. are crazy. Tiara. <laughs> thank yeah. God. Thank God you're pretty and your cat is pretty because it was a, if it was a guy, it would be like Dr. Evil. I know. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you, you can put the cat there while you talk. No worries. Okay, okay. I've been trying to push her away. But yeah, anyway, yeah, it is very possible to, to teach online just as, um, just as people have been, uh, well, learning, um, you know, at, at, from home. Uh, and our students, our students send us videos, and then and then we we evaluate them from there, and uh, yeah, it's wow. Okay, so it is definitely possible. Just to share with the audience, I actually interviewed a lady who does um, what do you call those? Uh, it's not yoga. It's the other one. Classes online, Pilates class online, and they literally get results in two weeks. You can see the neck all wad, the the back all like you know, uh, straight already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in one month, you actually lose weight. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Pilates. Um, right. So what about you, Christy, since I can see you here? Um, has your business been forever changed? Will you go back to the old business model or is it full steam ahead? And how has it changed? Yeah, I, I think, I know definitely my own personal consumption habits have changed. So it's hard to expect our customers and as such, the industry as a whole to have stayed the same. Um, I think the community would definitely have grown and learned in some way from this experience. 
And um, I suppose we all hope to come out of it with a little less waste and a lot more meaningful experiences, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, having said that, I, I do believe it will take time, conditioning, and, and all around a lot of support from the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, someone in the comments earlier mentioned that, yes, uh, we have a big competitor. I think that's absolutely right. Um, we have huge competitors in the market, in the industry, but one key thing to take away from this is that um, your competitors are who make you stronger, right? It's no longer yeah. just about competition. It's really about collaboration and working together to, to contribute to this whole ecosystem. I think, um, first and foremost, the designers themselves who have been churning season after season of magic is, mm -hmm. you know, things need to change. And, and I'm glad that it's, it's, it's changing, you know, because um, we're all human. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just part of the natural process that has to take place. And I'm very grateful okay. for that. Could you share a little bit about Aori? Because it says it's by the digital community for the digital community. Um, yeah, could you share with us a little bit about that? Yes, Aori. So Aori is our um, new brand, um, Digital First. Uh, we saw a need for this about nine to ten months ago. Um, it's a mass brand. Um, Aori actually stands for actually you are the inspiration. So we're starting oh. off with women's wear. Uh, mm -hmm. in for all sizes so we're not calling it plus size or regular size for all sizes right and it's really about community building um, for women by women um, and yeah check this out online it's it's new we'll uh, we're currently online only but in October we'll ha be having our first offline presence in Publica so stay tuned okay Ooh, okay so how do you spell Aurea? A-U-R-I -A -A okay Christy, if you could put the website links in the sure. comment section so people can uh, check it out and stuff like that. What about you, Linus? Has your business been forever changed? And or is there like a new business model or something? I, I think like for a tech startup, there will never be um, some, there will never be like a constant for us. It would always be forever changing. So definitely full steam ahead for us, right? Um, and, and I think... Um, but I, I, I'm speaking on behalf of our customers, our more traditional players uh, that we have uh, interacted with. The changes that we foresee um, for them is how they interact with the customers. Um, more and more of them are doing that online and creating that, that um, experience online from placing orders to handling like feedback, etc. Um, so those are the stuff that uh, we see them really adopting in such a fast speed. You know, like and an amazing feat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, um, if you had, um, okay, I'm gonna quickly. Uh, th okay, there is a question here, Sean, Malaysian International Chamber of Commerce, uh, with the inadequacy and high cost of Malaysian internet and latency. Oh, what steps? That one was there for the last panel. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, cool. Um, I think there's no questions then. Everybody like commenting on here. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. We love the comment section. And I know. Yeah. So keep it out. up. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Um, okay. If that's the case, then um, let me see. Um, Donna. Okay. On hindsight, what was the most impactful actions you think you took on the onset of Outbreak that really helped you? Whoever's ready. Um, sure. I'll start. Okay. Um, so on the evening of um, the 17th of March, that was the night before MCO, right? I remember being yes. the last to leave the office. Um, and now looking back, there was really a surreal sense of peace um, that everything was going to be all right, um, despite what my human brain was telling me, of course. Um, and I don't, I mean, I don't think even now, like, uh, you know, I'm ready to sum up the most impactful of, of, um, mm -hmm. of actions, but because we're still living through it, but I, I would have to say that trust in your team is, is very impactful. Um, on that day, we had staff taking home desktops in order to be able to continue, uh, continue contributing. We had sewers mm -hmm. bringing home garments to sew. At that wow. time, we hadn't started the PPE yet, but it was just, okay, I'm, I'm going to go home with this. I have a sewing machine at home. It's, it's really that spirit of just doing what needs to be done. You know, I, I think um, um, coming out of this alive really has a lot to do with the people around you. Okay, got it. So it was definitely team effort. I, I remember um, even Sinan from DD and Friends, he, he told everybody, all right, bring your laptop home, bring all the whatever home, we're going to work from home. So they still continue making shows, yeah. Um, what about uh, you, Tiara? Well, um, uh, trust is, is a big, is, you know, thank you, Christy. That, that's what everyone did and everyone... 
the team just really just stuck together as a family and like, what else can we do? Like, usually I would be in sales. Uh, usually I'd be in this or that. But what else can I do for the team to just support everyone who's rushing to go online and uh, trying to, 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 you know, we're suddenly, uh, we're suddenly going digital tomorrow and everyone needs to, to learn up and to support each other differently. Um, our content creating team and graphics department people have been, you know, like, like not sleeping at night, just trying to see how can we create <laughs> graphics and new content for everyone who wants to go live tomorrow. So, yeah, it's the, the, okay. the team, the team. Okay, it's definitely the team. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay, since uh, we're about to, we don't have that much time left. Uh, we, Nina, have, we actually yeah. have one question from uh, yeah. um, um, Rubia, right? Okay, so yeah. what we're going to do is, Rubia, thank you for the question. So I'm going to ask Rubia's question and to end it off, uh, another question. So has the operations, uh, Rubia's question is, has the cost of operations increased with digital? And my question to finish everything off is, if you had one advice to give businesses out there, what would it be? So, Lenise, can we start with you? Cost of operations, uh, no, at least for, for us. Um, a lot of us still working from home. Um, we, we have reduced our expenses significantly. Um, and, but, however, as we transition back to operating in person and going back to the office, right, we see those picking up again. Um, but it's also to manage that for us, um, at least on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the advice I would like to give to everyone, especially out there who is looking to transform um, their businesses in any way whatsoever, is to do three things consistently. First is to learn. Keep learning and educating yourself um, about the, the way that businesses are operating during this period. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, attend conferences like these. These are definitely helpful for, for yourself, you know, to uh, educate yourself and upskill yourself. Second is to unlearn. So at points of your, at periods of your business, there are certain things that does not, that you need to unlearn from. So in the past that you received those uh, information and it does not hold valid during this period, unlearn them quickly, right? And last but not least is to relearn. So once you've unlearned something, always figure out what else to actually pick, pick new things up so that you can adopt your business and change your business in a quicker, faster and in the most cost efficient way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Tiara, what about you? Um, has your cost of operations increased with digital? And if you had one advice to give businesses and entrepreneurs out there, what would it be? Well, it's, it's not, it's not uh, been more expensive in any way. Um, although we are using digital um, technology to market ourselves a lot more, which, well, but it's still nothing like it used to ever be. It's, it's okay, a lot so it's cheaper. actually cheaper. It's cheaper. Yeah, it's and okay. more efficient. We reach out to a lot more people than we could have before. Um, I would say uh, leaders of companies need to really be, you, you need to, 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 to be the first people to adopt that and, and understand the technology so you can, you can help your team. Like, okay, I understand that this, this is how we can do things differently now. So as, as a leader of the company, you need to be on board and know, really like get on that digital train and understand what's available very, very quickly. Learn, learn um, so you can inspire your team. And uh, um, businesses need to be agile enough to, so, so you can like quickly assess what's going on here and you know, how do we pivot, you know, so. Okay, yeah. okay. I love that, how to be uh, agile and pivot. What about you, Christy? Um, is it more expensive uh, to be digital? And what's your one advice to businesses out there? Um, I would say it's more targeted. I would say it's more expensive, but it's mm -hmm. just about putting your resources in the right place and repositioning them where it matters. Um, and there are ways to control the costs involved as well. Um, digital doesn't have to be expensive. I think that's the biggest myth. Um, in fact, it's supposed to help us break down walls, you know, to do things more efficiently and effectively. And, and in a few instances, it has. So um, it, it's a continuous learning journey. So, so don't give up or, or just start, you know, and, and it will lead you somewhere. That's, that's one assurance I can give. Um, like I said, we come from traditional 23 years of retail. So really, it's possible. And um, the key advice would be to adapt. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. 
Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ladies, for this amazing session. Tiara, somebody wants to know what kind of cat it is. Um, and Kim Jun, uh, to, <laughs> you need to validate, validate, validate your business. Lanise helped you. Please follow all these amazing ladies on LinkedIn. Um, you can connect with them there. And if there's anything I learned, it's about being adaptable and pivoting and, you know, really get online. Thank you very much, Amina, signing off. Over back to you, Laurie. Thanks, Nina. Oh my gosh, this panel was absolutely insane. I had so much fun listening to you guys. You kept it so lighthearted and I just, uh, I think like your energy is just contagious at this point. I'm like supercharged. I think, Tiara, your, your oh, cat is a Scottish troll, if I'm not wrong. Yes, my cat Yay! in the chat group. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, I thought this panel was absolutely amazing. I think we should immortalize this moment. You know how like after you finish an event and it's really, really good, we'll take a selfie. But since we're yeah. all at home, uh, yes, we yes. should just... Yeah, we can actually screenshot this later, so we just have to like hold a smile on the count of three. Are we up for that? Yes, yes. definitely. All right, let's fantastic. So one. let's smile. One, two, three. All right, fantastic. All right, we can actually take you. screenshots of that later. Uh, yeah. Kiara, Nina, Christy, Lenny, thank you so much for being a part of the SME Digital Summit 2020. Oh, the cat is here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh my Bye gosh, everyone. I'm so happy. <laughs> It was such a good session, you guys. Oh my God, for those of you who are tuning in right now, welcome to the SME Digital Summit 2020. If you thought that session was amazing, go ahead, take a screenshot of our little selfie just now and don't forget to post it on our social media. Give us a shout out. Don't forget to use our hashtag 100GoDigital and SME Digital Summit. Don't forget to post it on your Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and follow us on Facebook for more events.